Hello, I'm Hans and this is part two of my report about the Italy round trip, which I undertook in my van in February and March 2022. Part two is all about Sicily. Please enjoy. Well, I didn't see all of Sicily, but what I saw was really worth the trip. I could already spot the smoking Mount Etna from the mainland. The ferry passage from Villa San Giovanni to Messina only takes about 30 minutes. The first destination on Sicily is the city of Taormina. After a lengthy odyssey through the narrow streets of Taormina in search of a pitch for my camper, I ultimately ended up on a campsite in the city of Naxos on this tongue of land which you can see in the background. The site is about 2.5 miles outside of Taormina. The location of the city in these deep hills, the many medieval buildings, the plazas, the many bars and the nice restaurants provide for a really special flair. The antique Teatro Greco, the Greek theater, dates back to the 2nd century BC. Later on, the Romans enlarged and transformed it into a spacious arena for gladiator and animal fights. Two town gates are the only remnants of the former city walls and between those two gates you can stroll along the main shopping street, the so-called Corso Umberto. Taormina's Cathedral San Nicola and in front of it a baroque styled fountain. Above the town, a steep and winding walkway leads up to the little church Madonna della Rocca from the 17th century, which comes into picture here on the left side. The small chapel is very nicely decorated and displays a colorful ornamental painting. And it's only now from the inside that we can see that the church has been partially hewn into the rock. This spot also provides for a marvelous panoramic view on the city. On the right side and above the church you see the medieval fortress of Taormina on a very high rock. The small mountain village Castelmola in the background oversees Taormina and the coastline. In the evening I could admire the smoking Mount Etna from my campsite. Next destination was Catania, but I have to say that the city appeared to be very dirty and too run down for my taste, so I left after a pretty short visit. To be fair, there are also some nice spots, like the Piazza del Duomo with its cathedral, the fountain with the elephant, or the Castello Ursino. Alongside of orange tree plantations, I continued my way south to Syracuse. The ancient city was built on a small island just 150 feet off the coast. The Castello Magnace forms the most southern tip of a small island. It was built by Emperor Frederick II in the 13th century. The city was founded by Greek settlers in 733 BC. For several centuries, Syracuse used to be the biggest and most wealthy town in Sicily. In the ancient times it had up to 200,000 inhabitants, much more than today. The historic center with its narrow streets, 
the cozy restaurants and the big plazas like here, the Piazza Duomo, with the cathedral, make Syracuse a touristic hotspot, especially in summer. An important reason for founding the city on the small offshore island is the existence of a freshwater spring. Most surprising is the fact that this spring, named Aretusa, lies right adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea. In 2002, Noto and the entire valley of Noto up to Ragusa became a World Heritage Site for the multitude of buildings constructed in the very special Baroque style existing only here in Sicily. A devastating earthquake in 1693 destroyed all the cities in the valley of Noto. From about 1700 onward started a substantial, systematic and coherent reconstruction of the destroyed cities in the special Sicilian late Baroque style of this era. Ragusa is divided into two distinct districts. The lower town, Ragusa Ibla, that you see here. It was reconstructed right after the earthquake. The upper town, Ragusa Superiore, was built later, starting in the 18th century. The majority of Baroque palaces and churches is located in the lower town. Miles and miles of ugly greenhouses made of plastic foil are lining up along the street. The World Heritage Site Valley of Temples near the town Agrigento is another Greek settlement dating back to the 6th century BC. It displays foundations of various buildings, parts of the defense wall and city gates, but also a number of Greek temples in varying states of preservation. Just a few miles southwest of Aquicento, I explored the amazing cliffs called Scala dei Turchi, consisting of bright white marl, a compacted sedimentary rock. sloping street to the volcano's south side passes through fields of solidified lava streams, snow on the roadside and leads up to an elevation of 6300 feet. I parked for night at the public parking in front of the restaurant La Cantoniera, located just about 600 feet from the cable car station. From up here one can enjoy a magnificent view towards the sea and Catania. The city lights can be seen by night. And then I had a special visit at night by this fox who curiously inspected my van from a very close distance. On the next morning I took the cable car to the mountain station and from there a jeep to the highest observation point. 
the 68 euros for the up and down rides on the cable car, then the ride on a Jeep up to an altitude of almost 11,000 feet, where we had a guided tour by a volcano expert, were in my opinion well invested. And here we are at the nearest possible distance from one of the main craters. For security reasons, it's not allowed to go any closer. I choose to walk back down to the mountain station, which allowed me to take a close look to this smaller side crater. The little crater may look very calm, but it's not completely inactive, as indicated by the ascending smoke and water vapors coming into the picture. While descending, a few of the more than 300 side craters of the Mount Etna come into sight. Then I return to the ferry back to the mainland. In part 3 of my video I explore the very southern tip of Italy alongside the so-called Ionian Sea. Don't miss out on part 3. <music>